Hey everyone, this is Stuart Victor Echo 9, Charlie Foxtrot in this video. I'm gonna talk about uh, something that we use every single day, but ever stopped and wonder why we do it this way? So what is this mysterious thing that I'm gonna talk about today? Well, if you're a ham radio operator on HF, you probably work single sideband, but why do we use lower sideband on some bands and upper sideband on other bands? Well, in this video, I hope to address that and, uh, and help you understand why we use LSB and SSB. So let's get into that. So an early, um, early SSB transceivers or SSB receivers, uh, they had a nine megahertz intermediate frequency system. So basically, without getting into all the details of super heterodyne uh, receivers and heterodyne receivers, I'll cover those in other videos. Basically what happens when a signal comes in, it's not, it's coming in on a certain frequency, but for you to hear it, it needs to be mixed and blended. And these systems would shift the signal uh, coming into your radio to a nine megahertz uh, frequency inside of the receiver. This oddity of using LSB and USB is a, his it basically is a historical oddity. Back in the day, it was cheaper to mix uh, signals on, you know, 160, 80 and 40, uh, using lower sideband and upper sideband on 20, 15, and 10. So it, just, it was just an economical reason why they did it. That's the only reason why, and this, you know, it's carried on to today. Why we use LSB on, on the, on the uh, 160, 80, 40 meter bands and upper sideband on 20, 15, and 10. So basically, so basically this is just a leftover from the early days of radio. That's pretty much the reason why we do it the way we do it today. So single sideband is really um, a descendant of amplitude modulation or, or AM. Single sideband only requires half of the AM signal and offers much more talk power compared to AM. Since that unnecessary sideband and carrier are basically, you know, out of the picture altogether. SSB has its downside though. It requires a lot more frequency stability and somewhat more complexity. That's where we get into the heterodyne and super heterodyne receivers. Again, we're going to talk about that in a future video. But really, it's kind of hard, if not impossible, to find any amateur radio equipment today that doesn't support single sideband. So there you have it, folks. That's the reason why we use LSB and USB on certain bands. It really just came down to the early mixing uh, process on the 9 megahertz IF system and cost really that's it there's no other technical explanation that i can find or offer to you right now it's just basically the nine megahertz if system and cost i'm Stuart victor echo nine charlie foxtrot i hope you find these uh, videos uh, educational i try my best to cover things that other youtube channels uh don't uh, uh, don't go into detail on and uh the feedback's been very positive and thanks to everyone who leaves a a comment on the videos do so below and also, that gives me a shout on the radio when you hear me calling him. I really, really, really appreciate it. 7-3 for now. We'll see you guys in the next video.